welcome to episode five of Designers Learning jQuery. Today we're going to talk about traversing the DOM, which is just a developer way of saying moving around an HTML document. So let's take a look at how we can do that. I have set up for us an HTML document that contains a set of nested unordered lists. And what these contain is just a few species of butterflies and their entire biological classification. So you can see we've got just a few species listed over here, and then we can see their genus, family order, etc. So the first thing that we're going to get started with is adding a few styles to our HTML page. And we're going to keep this very simple. So first I'm just going to add a simple background color to the document. And then I'm going to add a couple of simple styles for our list items. I'm going to add a transparent border onto those just because we're going to be using a changing border color later on. And by putting a transparent border on now, we keep those items from jumping around later when we're changing the color of that border. And then I'm just going to add a little bit of margin and padding around those items. Okay, so if we just pop back over here and take a look, basically we've just kind of spread out of our items and added a subtle background color. Now we're going to add a couple of classes. The first one I'm going to add, I'm just going to call self and we'll set a background color of pink and a border color of pale violet red. And then finally, I'm going to add a selected class with a background of turquoise and a border color of dark cyan. And I just noticed I have a typo right here. Okay. Now those aren't used in our document at all. We'll be using those in our JavaScript. So basically, I'm going to pick things and highlight them in pink. And then as we move around the document, I'll highlight where we have moved in the turquoise color. Now let's go back over to the index.html file and take a look because I've added a few IDs and classes to help us move around this file. So you'll notice that here I've added an ID of Hetty to the family Hedalidae. I have no idea if I'm saying that correctly. I've added a class of Albi to the species Albifascia. And I have added an ID of Senna to the species Senna. So we're going to use those IDs to grab these items and then we'll move around the document from there. So let's get started by selecting that list item with an ID of Albi, and then we'll go ahead and add the class self. So now if I come back over and refresh the page in the browser, that pink highlight class called self is highlighting that list item with an ID of Albi. Now let's take a look at how we can move to the next list item, Conifera, and highlight that one. So we can just say next. And then here we can add the class of selected. So if I refresh the page in the browser, you can see that I started here, but I moved to the next node. And now this node is highlighted in green. So once again, where we start is pink and where we end is green or technically turquoise. Let me go ahead and comment this out. And let's say that we wanted to get not just the very next one, but all of the rest in this list. So if we wanted all the rest of the species, we could do that like this. And I'm going to go ahead and copy this line because what we're typing isn't so different. I'm just going to go ahead and use next all instead of next. And if I refresh the page in the browser, you'll see that here's where I started and next all has selected both of these two items here. So next will select just one item. Well, next all will select 
all of the next items. And the selection works in the other direction as well. So now let's comment this line out and let's select that list item with the class of Sena. And we'll add a class of self. And let's take a look at where we are in the HTML document now. And we can see that we're down here. And let's move to the previous nodes. So just like we used next, we can use prev. And let me go ahead and add the selected class there. And now if I refresh the page in the browser, you can see I started here and I'm ending there. So pre will select the one previous node in the DOM. And just like we had next and next all, we have prev and prev all. So I'm just going to copy that line and we'll go ahead and change that to prev all. And now you can see this has selected all of the previous nodes. So we can move forward by using next or next all. We can move backward by using prev or prev all. We can also move up the DOM by selecting parent items. So let's take a look at how to do that. I'll go ahead and comment that out. And we're gonna go back to that list item with an ID of LB. We'll add a class of self so we can see where we're starting. So there's where we're getting started and I can say parent, and then we'll add the selected class there so we can see where we ended up. And you can see here that we have selected the unordered list that wraps these four list items because that is the next parent. And I'll go ahead and comment that out we could also change this to parents. And now we can see that this has selected all of the parents. And in fact, if we take a look inside of the developer tools, we can see that, let's go ahead and inspect this element. Here is the first parent with a class of selected going up from there. The list item has a class of selected. The next UL has a class of selected that li and ul have a class of selected another one another one another one and finally we're up to the kingdom the body has a class of selected and even the html element has a class of selected so you can see that parents has selected every single node of the dom going all the way up to the root html element of the document now we may not want it to do that let me go ahead and copy this line comment this one out. To any of these methods that we've used so far, we can pass a selector. And what will happen is now only the parents that match this selector are going to be selected. So if I refresh the page in the browser, we can see HTML and body no longer have the selected class, but all of the ULs do. The list items no longer get that class because the list item doesn't match the selector that we passed in. So um, only the unordered lists that are parents of our starting node receive the class of selected. Just like we can use parent and parents to move up the DOM, we can use children to move down. So let's start from our list item with a class of Hetty and we'll add class self so we can see where we're starting from. Let me go ahead and close this. So in this case, Hetty is here and it's a family node and it contains the UL with a class of genus and also a UL with a class of species that lists out several species. So here it is highlighted in our document. Then we could say dot children, and then let's go ahead and add a class of selected so we can see what we've ended up with. And you can see that what gets selected is the very next item down the DOM. So here we add a UL of Hetty, 
So what gets selected is the UL with the class of genus. And if we pop open the developer tools and look over here, here's the UL with the class of genus that is now has the selected class. Now you'll also notice that that selection didn't go any further. Nothing further down the DOM received the class of selected. So that works similarly to how parent worked, where it selected just one DOM level. What if we wanted to select all of them? So for going up the DOM, we had parent to select one node up. We had parents to select all the nodes up. Going down the DOM, we can use children to select the direct children of the node that we started from. But if we wanted to go further down the DOM, similar to the way that parent goes all the way up, there's actually not a method built into jQuery that will do that. What we do have, and let me go ahead and copy that and, and comment that out, what we do have is a function called find. And this gets used quite a lot, but let me show you that if we come back over here and refresh the page, starting from here, find, nothing is highlighted in green. And that's because find requires us to pass a selector to it. So for example, I could find all of the list items. And now this is a list item, and here's the individual list items. Now there are other types of children because there are also unordered lists that are nested inside of our selected element. What if we did wanna just select everything that was inside that particular node? Well, we could use our universal selector, just like that. So now if we refresh the page and take a look, we'll see that inside of our list item with an ID of Hetty. Everything now is going to have that selected class. Here's the UL with the class of selected. And here are all these list items inside with a class of selected. So that's the only way that you can select all of the items going down the DOM, similar to the way that parent selects all of the items going up. Now let me go ahead and comment this out and let's take a look at how we can find the items next to where we are. We'll go back to that list item with an ID of Albi. We'll add a class of self so we can see where we're starting from. Let me go back over here. So that's where we're starting. We can use siblings to find all of the items at the same level. So let's go ahead and add the class of selected there. And now you can see that here's where we started from and siblings will select all of the DOM nodes that are at that same level in the DOM. Now what if we wanted to include this starting list item also in our selection? Well jQuery also provides us, so let me comment that out and we'll say this right in here and self which will allow us to add the starting DOM node to any group of selection. So if I refresh this, now you can see that what we have selected is all of these DOM nodes that are at the same level. So far we've kept our DOM traversal pretty simple, but let's take a look at a slightly more complicated example to see what kinds of things are possible. So I'll comment this out and let's start from our list item with a class of SEMA and we'll add a class of self so that we can keep track of where we started. So we'll refresh this and, oops, I had a typo. Let me correct that. It's Sena, not Sema. And here's where we're starting from. And let's say that we're gonna move up to parents, but we only want the list items with a class of genus. So let's go ahead and add a class of selected to kind of get a feel for where we are right now. Oops, and I forgot to add my dot. 
as my class selector. So if you're selecting a class, you need to make sure to include the doc just like you do when you're writing CSS. So what this has selected is the UL parent that is holding these two genus listings. Let's go ahead and find anything with a class of species and we'll add the class selected to that. And we'll see that this has now selected these two separate unordered lists. If I want just the first one, I could add in first. So if I refresh this, now I'm just to there. And then if I want to find that list item in particular, I could say find the LI. So refresh that and now we have just selected this list item. If there were other list items in this list, if there were other species in genus Perhochalcia, that's my best guess, then those would be highlighted as well. Um, but there's just one there, so that's the only one that's gotten selected. Now let's go ahead and do a little experiment and change this to family. So we're going to go ahead and move up to the UL with a class of family, and then we'll find the first unordered list with species and find all of the list items in that list. And you can see here's our first list inside the family. And you can see we've selected this list right here that contains family, and we've selected all of the list items inside the UL with a class of species. So starting from here, we successfully selected all of these list items up here. Now once you've moved through the DOM and selected a different DOM node, you can use any of the jQuery methods. So you could hide them, you could show them, you could animate them, add CSS classes, change the text content, do anything at all you'd like. We just used a simple change of class name to make it easy to see where we were moving around. So moving around the DOM can be very powerful and can enable you to make some highly customized modifications to your HTML document after it's been loaded into the browser. As we work through more video tutorials, you'll see how powerful moving around the DOM can be and the kinds of effects that we can achieve by being able to move from one DOM node to another. Thank you so much for joining me today and I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video and would like to learn more about jQuery, pick up a copy of my book, jQuery for Designers, available now. Thank you.